Good evening once again. I hope you're doing well in the Lord. It's still your servant here, Mr. Aida Kimundo. Um, I thank God for the end of the day. We pray God that He has kept you good and that we have a new evening and facing a new morning. And the Lord is so good and we thank Him for all that He does for us. As sinful as we are, as unworthy as we are, He still He still guides us. He still does His will upon our life. Despite our waywardness, the Lord has always been good and that is His nature. So yet again this evening, we want to consider again the text uh, in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13. Before we do that, let's pray. Father Divine, we thank you for who you are, for who you are despite ourselves. Thank you for your graciousness, for your goodness, and for all that you do upon us. Now while we consider your word, we pray this day that you will empower us with by the Spirit that we may embrace your word and we may walk according to your will and riches in glory. May this word comfort us this evening and bring us closer to yourself because we pray and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Now Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13, the Bible still says to us that watch therefore for you know not neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man comes. Now in the morning while we were discussing, we kept saying that the word of the word watch means to keep to keep uh, to keep uh, to keep awake or to be awake and we don't so much to understand how it means to keep awake or rather to to be awake because we realize that we're living in uh, not ordinary times and the darkness is all around us and uh, we are we are prone to to fall into the ways of the of the evil one but if we mean to be awake then our eyes should be open and open for to see that the devil is everywhere and he may he may be able to take captive of us if we are not careful now friends there's another meaning to the word watch the word watch also means to be alert the word watch also means be on the lookout. That is, you're just not being, uh, you've not, you're not just awake, you're not just up and looking, but you're also alert in terms of your mind. Your mind is not just shut, it is not just awake and not doing anything, but it is calculating. Friends, we are living in times whereby we have to be knowledgeable concerning so many things and so many matters that are happening around us. Now you realize that as things are happening in Vatican City, as things are happening in America, we in, in East Africa or rather we may not be able to, to, to really get so concerned about these things. You find many a times that we, let's say, Perhaps just uh, five percent of the church actually delve to know matters to do about prophecy. You realize that very few get to study prophetic events, get to study what is happening in the world as concerning our our spiritual matters. So you realize that it is important that as we are being called upon to be watchful, it is important also to get to know about what is happening in terms of of Bible prophecy. What is happening in Vatican City? What is the Pope saying? Because where that is where we are supposed to be looking at. Because there is where certain announcements are going to come and we are supposed to look at what is happening in America. What is happening? Because these are the big cities. These are the this these are the prophetic uh, cities that we are told about that are kingdoms that are going to come out and speak certain things that are blasphemous against the God Most High. And once they speak these things, we have to be awake, we have to be alert, because those will be the signs, the rumors and these things that if we are not careful to understand what is happening, then we will be left behind. Now friends, it is important that as you are being alert, 
get to know what is happening get information from out there get to know we we are just not called upon to be studious and reading the bible and the bible alone it is important that as we are reading the bible we have the 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 sword or the shield on our hand on the other hand that is trying to understand what is the information out there getting to know what is happening all around us that we may be knowledgeable concerning the signs and the times that we are living in and what is actually happening out there friends we can be christians we can be christians yes we are adventists we know these things you know we also always claim that we we are people of the book we always claim that we are book, people of the book we have all these books and we say they are our books the books of ellen g white that that she has written many books concerning uh, daniel and revelation we have so much information in our books but well as much as we say we have these books but reading is quite another issue reading about these books and even being able to explain matters to do the prophecy with the bible prophecy about the beast and the kingdoms and all these animals well so many of us do not have an idea of what is called even the new world order to talk about the sunday law and this lies that the devil is bringing about in these last days about the immortality of the of the soul and even sunday sacredness these are things that are creeping slowly into the church that we need to be alert and watchful about. We need to be mindful with information concerning what is the truth and which side are we to stand at. What is, how does the Lord desire for us to understand that if we understand then we can be able to counter whatever the devil will bring upon us. Whatever the lies that the devil is going to bring then we'll be able to stand forth and be able to counter them. Whereas if we are not careful to understand what is the truth, when, the, when a lie comes it will quickly sweep us away. No, when, uh, when, when Paul says that we have to be mindful and careful on what we believe so that we may not be swayed here and there with every wind of doctrine that surely comes along our way and tries to convince us outside. We have to stand for the truth. We have to be able to have tested the truth and known what is truth and what is error that we may be able to stand having our loins guarded with the truth and having our breastplates of, of righteousness and our feet shod with the preparedness of the gospel of the truth. Okay, that is in Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 14. We have to understand what is the truth and put our feet on that which is firm that we may not be fallen by any wind of doctrine that easily comes around us. Now the devil knows that we are not living in ordinary times. If there be a time that he is working quickly and even faster, these are the times. He is working left, right and center to ensure that we do not get to know the truth. We do not get to know the truth. He is mixing error with truth. Having 99% truth and 1% error. It is so hard to know what is error right now. It is so difficult to know what is truth right now because everybody comes and says, even on the pulpits, on our own pulpits as Adventists, on our own pulpits we have those who come and preach the truth. We also have those who come and even preach error upon our pulpits and many people are being swayed away. I have had so many examples of, of university students who at school, because you know and we know that yes as we are in school we are young people and we are we have we have all the energy god used young people when he was uh, when he was on earth christ used young people most of it, the disciples that he had were literally above eight, uh, below 20 years old these were very energetic young men and th th those were the ones that were easy to to teach and to understand and be able to to guide in the right way but yet again with our youthfulness then we are again very easy to to beguile and move to the wrong direction 
in in so many universities i've heard whereby someone comes and preaches a particular gospel and young people believe in it they strongly hold on to it and they are swayed away from the church i've had so many friends of mine who actually went away from the church and even went and started their own churches with so very strange doctrines and we even wonder so this is also calling us about that we may have we may be alert we may be watchful with our minds open to know what is truth to understand what is error because we are not living in any ordinary times information is so critical for us to understand information we need to understand our bibles inside out we need to understand what Christ desires of us from Genesis, even the Revelation, even these apocalyptic books that we're so fearful, we're so fearful about. If you do not, James in James, James says that if you do not have wisdom, if you do not have knowledge, ask of who? Ask of God, who giveth so freely and withholds not. If you ask of him, then he will be able to give you knowledge. So that that knowledge can be able to expand your memory and you'll be able to understand how you ought to live in these last days. But above all, I wish that we, we may know him. We may know him. In Philippians chapter 3 and verses 10, it says that, that I may know that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering it may being made conform, conformable unto his death the most important thing above all being alert being watchful about this last day is that we may know our jesus that we may know this christ who died for us we may have an experience with him we may have a relationship with him that we may therefore be able to stand even in these last days. But don't be anxious for anything. He continues to say in, in chapter 4 verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. You desire to have knowledge. You desire to know about prophecy and to know about what is happening in this current world and to be knowledgeable and to have your loins guarded ask of god pray prayer is also a way to be alert in these matters ellen g white says in one of on, on in uh, one of her books she says about prayer in one of the chapters she says pray pray especially in your mind do not give rest to the Lord, for his ears are open to hear sincere, importunate prayers when the soul is humbled before him. Let me highlight something. She says, pray and pray especially in your mind. Always be prayerful. Always ask for God what you want. What is it that you honestly desire? And if you be able to place it before his ears, he will hear. Every sincere prayer that we make every desire that we make he is able to answer it at times it's just because we've not been able to honestly ask and we are not yet ready to let go or even embrace what he's going to give us sometimes he delays but always always keep asking keep praying until you yourself mean it then he will be able to answer it but at his opportune time he will open for you and you'll be able so keep studying keep praying so that you will be able to understand as the Lord requires of you to understand. He requires of us to all be knowledgeable in this matter. It is what he calls to be watch. Be watchful. Open your eyes. Then you will be able to see. Then you will be able to understand. Let him open your spiritual eyes, your inner eyes, that you can be able to see and discern the ones of the evil one around you. That we may not live as, as fools, but we may live as wise. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let us pray. Precious Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for all that you have given us. Now bless our going out. Bless our coming in. Help us to be watchful and open our eyes, Father, even our spiritual eyes, that we may understand your will 
and understand what you desire for us. Help us to be watchful for the days we live in are not ordinary days, but they are days that we need to be fearful and we need to have our loins guarded and watchful for the devil is roaring like a lion seeking whom he may devour. We may not be found in the words of the evil one, we may not be found trapped in his net, but we will be found standing firm on your word and on the principles that you have given unto us in your word. Blessed be your name this night, bless us all the days of our life, because we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you.